everybody! As you probably already know, I am not one of the fastest chess players in the world. In fact, I'm probably the opposite. And that's why I wanted to get better at bullet. I thought, what better way is there to get up good at bullet than by getting some help from no other than woman grandmaster Nemo, who's been over 2,500 in bullet. I hope that you enjoy and please, if you do, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Oh, there we're, we're going. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm nervous. All right. I'm trying out a new opening. Oh, wait. Oh, oh I, I really thought wait. you were going to play Bishop G7. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, wait. I haven't seen this line of the Grunfeld before for sure. I, I learned the opening like the other day because I was like, ah, I'm bored of my opening. So let's try something new. So I'm like figuring this out too. <laughs> oh, I think that one like this. Ooh, okay. I'll just have to give you that one. You might be giving me a lot more than just that one. Thing. I know, I realize. <laughs> I realized I was not <laughs> just like giving you an exchange. <laughs> oh no, that's a check as well. No, your pawn is so annoying, Nemo. Get out of there. <laughs> It definitely is. Oh no, now your queen becomes annoying as well. Everything is annoying. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Oh my god, the time. That was so close. Oh, that was such my. a close game. You played really well there. You played really, really well there. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's okay. So, for, so, so, like, during those, like, really crucial moments, like, yeah. when you know that you're, like, trying to promote or win, that's when it's okay to take that one second to, like, maybe just think about, like, Okay, here, what should I actually do? That's because, a really like, good point. Not only apply in end games, obviously, but also a lot of the middle games. Like when you just see tactics, like you have a feeling already for like, oh, is this position a chance in which I can win? The answer, if, if, like you, sh you already have this intuition, right? So when you have that intuition, you should just take a little bit of extra time, not look at chat and be like, okay, here, I probably have a winning move. If I find this move, it doesn't matter if I'm downtime, I'll like have an extra queen or something, right? Yeah. And that's going to be how you win the bullet game. That's actually such good advice though. Because yeah, I guess that people, and I mean, I too, like we just think that we have to play fast the whole game in bullet, but it's important to know when to play fast and when to not play fast and to yeah, sometimes exactly. just take a second more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being able to balance it is really important. My bishop on e7 is not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a bit of a sad bishop. All right, I'll just go back. Close positions are so hard to play in bullet because you're like... Yeah, I have no clue what to play here, to be honest. Mm, you're doing great, though. This is the part where I probably just start trying to flag you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, I think I did the same thing. Yeah, I played too slow it's this all one. right. I played too slow. All right. <laughs> um, I mean, there's always a reason for why you play slow, right? It's not just because you're playing slow. That's that's not the thing here. But yeah, it, in general, it's just like getting familiar with like positions and like being more familiar with the plants. But yeah, that, that's just like basically <clears throat> how you kind of like play fast. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. I can see here that I started thinking really like when I was going bishop g5, bishop here, and I wasn't really sure of what to do. That's when I started yeah, thinking a lot. For sure. So for example, when it's a close position, that's why I say close position is so hard to play in bullet because there's nothing happening. It's very hard to just come up with a plan on the fly in bullet because you don't have the time to just sit there and do anything. So usually like some really good tricks in bullet is just trying to go for palm breaks. Um, so for example, your queen c7 move took a lot of time. King h8 took a lot of time. Bishop b7 mm. took a lot of time. You can play those moves a lot faster because realistically, what am I going to do? No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, like, like I, there's not much I can do, right? So as long as it's not a blunder, I tell people that it's probably okay to just kind of make whatever move. But that, once again, that's not really like the best advice to give. It's just you have to get more familiar with like those kind of positions. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think it's good advice anyway, because I think that what happens is that there's like sort of like a little blockade in the head or something. I don't know. But that mm -hmm. just sort of when you don't really know what to do in a position, it just sort of tells you to find something. Um, yeah. Or to find a plan, and then if you can just like let go of that and just play a move, that's really gonna save a lot of time. So I think you're yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you are playing totally fine. It's just I think it's just a, like being more familiar with these kind of positions. I'm gonna I'm inspired now to play the fastest game of my life. Okay, I'm gonna do that. No, it's a trade off. It's a trade off between playing fast and playing bad i think <laughs> i always i always like to joke that playing fast and bad is the best way to go because like it's bullet right but like uh not good advice once again i'm sure your traditional coaches will absolutely hate me for this 
<laughs> now I'm gonna go for one where I play fast and bad. So now everything okay. that matters is just for me to play fast. Now this is a very stuck position for you. <laughs> I can feel that. <laughs> All right, at least we're getting sort of. Oh no, you have it bishop it or oh. Mm -hmm. And your rooks mm -hmm. also hang. Yeah, I yeah. But it's okay. I just oh you could have taken my rook. Um, oh okay. oh I actually could have. Oh this wait, I'm just exchanging. <laughs> oh wait, this is just horrible. All right, I really could just have taken your rook before, right? I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's 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 not like full material, but it's not bad. It's better yeah. than this. Probably. Yeah, I like these moves. You're attacking me. You're causing pressure. <laughs> okay, GG. Uh, yeah, so usually playing active positions is a lot more fun than playing passive positions. Are you an aggressive player? Just curious. Yeah, I think I am. Or like um, I enjoy playing aggressive positions a lot more. It's just that I don't always get to them. And then when I don't get to them, I'll just play really passive and be unhappy about my position. Yeah, the thing about playing really passive in bullet chess is that you're probably going to end up losing the position just because your opponent has much easier moves to make. Yeah. I can't believe I'm coaching people to play bullet chess. This is this is like <laughs> peak. This is actually peak. <laughs> it's amazing. There's like not enough bullet coaches out there. There are good chess coaches, but there are no bullet coaches. I think that you should you should get that niche I just there. Become a bullet coach. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I I I mean I have a swindles course on chess.com. I think that was my introduction to like bullet chess. Because 95% <laughs> of the time I feel like when I win in bullet, it's not because I actually won. It's because I wait, where's the swindle course? Um oh, it's just oh. on chess.com. I think you can just go to it. I didn't know there's a swindle course. Andrea, we need yeah, to watch I it. Yeah, swindle course. It's actually really, really funny. Uh, let me see. Wait, they made a profile. Oh, yeah, swindle me. course. Yeah, I have my own course on Chesslock. I mean, it's so funny. It's like so... Oh, it's just on the bottom of my profile. Here, I'll just drop in the Discord. It's it's just yeah. like... Yeah. It's like how to swindle your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that's why like 95% of the time, I'm not winning on the game. But you don't need to win on the game. You don't need to win in the position to win the game. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, yeah. you can just outplay them. You can just outswindle them. You can flag. So there's a lot of ways you can win a bullet. You can oh, flag them. You can give them enough checks mm -hmm. to cause them to flag. You can, like, do spike cap. Like, you can capture pieces that they don't expect when they're low on time. And then they just don't react, right? Because they've already pre-moved something else. Yeah. And another way you can do what you can do is go for really, really cheap checkmate threats. And if your opponent is probably on a one-track mind trying to beat you, they will not spot the checkmate. Um, something else you can do is just like knights are really good in bullet games. You can literally just like try to fork them or whatever, and they probably won't notice too. So there's a lot of things in bullet chess that is different from blitz chess or like classical chess that I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize. But I think it's also really bad to get into the mindset of practicing this because then you'll fuck up your blitz chess so bad. <laughs> so like i don't know i don't know it's a trade-off it's a trade-off <laughs> that was so much good info though in 30 seconds i feel like i just want to record those 30 seconds of information you said there <laughs> yeah i mean i mean there's just so much stuff that once you play enough bullet games you kind of realize um like i feel like i feel like i would lose to so many people in 10 minute chess just because i have zero patience all right are we gonna go for the last one <laughs> yeah let's do the, wanna do the last one okay <laughs> Oh, I actually have not been adopted. I've only been adopted once in my channel ever. Really? Yeah. And that was in Bullet as well. <laughs> I've been adopted by so many villains. Don't even feel bad. I've been adopted by Aryantari. I've been adopted by uh, Ming. I've been adopted by Levy, I think. Um, I've been adopted by... Yeah, dude, I can just like list off every single person I've been adopted by and the list is like five, 50 names long, I swear <laughs> to God. Like everyone just adopts me whenever I play against them. Here we go here. This is a really good position for you. Oh, and um, fun fact, I didn't just get adopted by Aryantari, I got adopted 40 to zero by Aryantari. 40 to zero. <laughs> 40 to zero, 40 to zero. Like that was 
after that, I decided that I will get better at chess. Like that was my motivation because the story goes, I've known Aryan for most of my life. Um, I mean, we used to be the same level at tournaments and stuff. Yeah. And then I was like, there is no way I can get adopted by Aryan because like I've known him since he was a kid, right? Like I drew against him when we were younger. Uh, yeah. When we were like nine. And anyway, he's like a 27, almost 27, 2600, 2700 um, Grandmaster now. Yeah. So he's really, really good. But yeah, so I was like, eh, no way I can get adopted by this guy. And yeah, surprise, I got adopted pretty bad. <laughs> That's such a great source of inspiration, though. Mm -hmm, for sure. Oh, no. But oh, you see, this is one I should not be premiuming. Like every single time I get reminded that, hey, I'm not as good as chess as the counterparts that I played against when I was younger. And that makes me sad. <laughs> so it's just like, <gasps> oh. I can't believe I premiered there. I really should not have premiered there. That was... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's like exactly what you told me, Anna. Don't premiered in that type of position. You had five <laughs> seconds too. And Anna, you had 14 when you... Or like mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, you had time there. That was one of those moments where you just had to, you know... I just oh, had yeah, to I follow the Nemo rules there. I know. I know. Yeah, you just had to like wait a little bit there. You had yeah. To wait a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no uh, point in premiering that. Nemo did it. I am officially adopted by Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> officially. All right. We got a new kid. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a big thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. If you ever want to catch me live on Twitch, you can do that by, go by going to twitch.tv slash Anna I hope to see you there. Bye bye.